Hey guys, this is your host Eric. Today we are going to watch action genre movie called John Wick. Spoilers ahead, turn on your subtitle, I greatly appreciate your support. Enjoy the video. According to legend, there is a powerful assassin who not only specializes in kidnapping but is also sent to scare away the boogeyman. This kid is so stupid that he killed his puppy. As a result, he pursued him and killed all of his relatives. John Wick is a well-known assassin who terrorizes the underworld. After his wife's death, John Wick has come clean. He only has a house, a Mustang, and Daisy, his little puppy. This kid had his eye on his vintage car the day he drove Daisy to the gas station. He asked if he could buy it, but John ignored him without saying anything to the retard. He drove home late at night. Daisy notices strange noises. Daisy went down to investigate and was beaten. When they arrived, it was the douchebags from the gas station. They not only stole the Mustang, but also murdered Daisy just as the devil was about to retire. These knuckleheads decided to mug him. They were very astute. He had the Mustang reconditioned. When the owner of the garage saw the car, he almost spit his pant after learning that this kid had killed the owner's dog. Without a doubt, nobody knows why he punched this retarded kid. The garage guy appears to be the only one who realizes the kid is pretty much screwed. It didn't take John long to find his car. The garage boss tells John what happened and introduces himself as Joseph Vigo, little brat's son. John borrowed a car and drove away without saying much. He returned home with a hammer to retrieve his weapon. John opened his hot cargo full of dangerous after smashing the floor, simultaneously. When Vigo learned that his son had been beaten, he immediately called the garage owner and demanded to know why he had hit his son. The idiot stole John Wick's car and murdered his dog. Sir Vigo has been rolling around in the underworld for decades, and after hearing it, his feet immediately became cold. Then he orders his son to beat the S out of him by punching him in the gut. The kid raised his neck to argue, but Vigo punched him again, allowing him to do so. He then discussed the legend of John Wick, who lived in a bar with only a pencil and three corpses. Vigo once hired John to complete a mission that no one else could. But to everyone's surprise, John survived, and now you're stealing his car and murdering his dog. Do you want to be the one to die before me? You moron. It was, after all, his son. Vigo couldn't bear the thought of him dying. He took the initiative to call John, hoping to reach an agreement that would satisfy both parties. But John didn't give a damn and hung up right away. What a colossus, Chad. Knowing that the negotiation had failed, Vigo had no choice but to act first. Twelve men are dispatched to break into John's home. This is no longer a house, but rather a cemetery for the intruder. There is no way out once you've entered. The hunter is transformed into the prey. Vigo centers twelve men, and half of them have already been annihilated. The other half met the same fate as John, being shot down. Only one person remains. John quickly knocked him down and stabbed him in. The doorbell rang and the lights flashed at this point. It's a police vehicle. John quietly pushed open the door. The officer greeted him warmly and entered to find a body on the floor. Were you working again, John? No, just some unexpected visitors. It's getting late now. I'll leave you to it. Then, John arranges for the bodies to be picked up by the cleaning service. They arrive to clean up the garbage piles that had accumulated in John's home. Then 12 well-wrapped garbage bags are dragged into the car. Vigo is also aware of them. He wasn't taken aback. After all, it is John. Following this, Vigo offers any assassin a $2 million contract on John's head. He goes to see another top assassin who is also a friend of John's, and Vigo wants to hire him to kill John. Marcus, on the other hand, simply smiled, and Kay nodded. Vigo happily left after seeing Michael complete the transaction. Marcus hasn't worked his muscles in a long time and has decided to show off his hot goods at this time. John checked into a hotel. It is very safe here because there is a law that prohibits murder. To find Winston, John goes to the hotel's underground bar. This man wields enormous power. Winston knows everyone and everything in the underworld. They talked for a while before getting to the main point. Winston then tells Joseph where he is. When John returned to the dressing room, he was fully outfitted from head to toe with bulletproof vests, guns, and daggers, approaching the bar where Joseph is hiding. After the security guard is apprehended, John sneaks in through the back door. Then a gun barrel was pointed at his head. It turned out that the two knew each other, so John didn't want to kill him saying that, I'm here for work. Why don't you take a day off and relax? The security guard is extremely intelligent. He just thanked John and walked away while this guy washed his face. His friend was shot once and then died after hearing a noise. When he turned around, he was immediately punched by John. If he resisted a little, he'd have to reveal Joseph's whereabouts because this guy was also there, assisting Joseph in killing his dog. John drowned his face until he died. Yos was still having a good time inside. The outside guards were dealt with quietly. After the other, a guard soon discovered John, and the two engaged in solo combat. But he's only a low-level NPC, so he can only keep John at bay for so long. 
Yasef approached John with a pale face, taking advantage of John's preoccupation with his subordinates. Yasef bolted with his ass. John pursued her to the dance floor. Death walks coldly, while Joseph flees like a coward. John didn't throw away a single bullet, clearing the Vigo-filled room. The Boogeyman will meet whoever is blocking John's path in the next room. The majority of the guards had perished in the face of John's wrath. His henchmen had arrived to save his a dollar sign dollar sign. Unfortunately, John was shot, but his bulletproof vest saved him. John broke his ribs during a hand-to-hand -hand fight with the chief bodyguard. The man then threw him downstairs. The main target had escaped, so staying was pointless. So John quickly left the bar and went back to the hotel to rest, preparing to sleep. Michael was preparing to shoot him when he noticed that someone had broken into the room. Marcus shot John's pillow right away, and John immediately alerted. Perkins, it turns out, also wanted to kill John for the bounty, despite the fact that doing so would violate the hotel's rules. Even when John was hurt, she was no slouch. Perkins was quickly filled with blood by John after the fight. John inquires of Perkins as to the whereabouts of Joseph and Vigo. Perkins then reveals the location of a church, and John decides not to execute him. John walked into the church wearing a suit and leather shoes like a badass. What can I do for you? The priest asked as he walked over. Set the example. Father John drags the priest to the vendor, beating two guards in the process. The priest was then forced to enter the code to open the door, and the two accountant girls fled. He poured the money all over the floor, then lit a cigarette and burned it all. Vigo rushed to the church after hearing the news. John has been waiting for a long time here. Then John unleashes a full-fledged assault on Vigo. After reloading, John continued to shoot the Vigo boys in front of him. The car then collided with John's side, knocking him unconscious. When John awoke, he was imprisoned in a warehouse. When Vigo asked if John had fully recovered, he didn't respond. But now that his dog has died, John is willing to let his hands get bloody again. Vigo believes John is dying so he doesn't care, even though they used to be partners. When he thought he was about to die, there was a loud crack and the guard fell. Marcus, an old friend of John's, has called. After some hand-to-hand -hand combat, John took the opportunity to fight back. John knocks him out as well, determined to exact his vengeance. John forced Vigo to stop by blocking the front of his car and firing consecutively. Vigo was forced to exit the vehicle. I'll put a hole in your head if you don't tell me where your son is. Vigo has no choice but to reveal his son's location in a warehouse. Joseph is being watched over. The guard kept reporting the situation and thought it was reassuring. But when Joseph's friend was shot in the head, they realized they were screwed. When John pressed the switch, the car in the warehouse was blown up. The bodyguards were all wiped. And who's up next? Joseph, I'm sorry. It's you, son. He'd never been so terrified. Not long after, he fled. John fatally shot him. As retaliation for Perkins' trouble, John prepares to leave the hotel. With the pain of losing, the hotel owner sent him a new car, Vigo. His child was unable to swallow his rage. He believed Marcus had betrayed him, so he beat him up and called John to inform him. When John found out Marcus had been beaten up, he quickly handed over the car to Marcus. But it was too late by the time he arrived, and Marcus' body was already cold. Their feud has yet to be resolved. Perkins is now on his way to a location. Because she had broken the hotel's rules, people from all four sides surrounded her, and the price she had to pay was four bullets. Winston then called John. He stepped into full gear and announced that Vigo was preparing to board a helicopter to flee. When John caught up to Vigo, he rammed a car, causing it to fall off the road. Vigo's car collided with a post. His car was forced to come to a halt. John did not get out of the car, but instead ran backwards, hitting one person on the roof and another on the side of the road. John loaded his gun and began sprinting before taking down another man. Vi is getting close. Henchman, smirked. Then John allowed him to go to the grave. Suddenly, John's side was struck. Vigo had a chance in the car. He tries to stuff John's into them. At a critical juncture, John dashed out into the pouring rain. They used their most primitive weapon, their fists. When confronted with the dagger, John did not flee. He stabbed Vio's hand into his body, then pulled out the knife and stabbed him back. Vigo is then reunited with his mentally retarded son. He saw a cute pit bull who reminded him of Daisy at this point. Then we see them strolling down the street. We really appreciate you watching. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell because it is really important for us. Thank you.